feel sexy and beautiful and be in our bodies. Um, but, but most of us aren't taught the value and how to do that. So basically, it's moving away from external validation uh, to internal validation. And how do we get all that? The whole philosophy behind self-appeal and what I had to really learn was that, and, and actually what I did learn in the clubs um, and what I te used to teach my students, my striptease students, and I'll share that in a moment, but it is that uh, when I love myself, when I wholeheartedly uh, uh, validate who I am and I have respect for who I am, the person that I attracted loves me no matter what I look like. And he's, he's on his own journey she was a larger woman and she said, I don't have a body, I am a body. So first of all, we have to remember that we are whole beings. And then specifically, it's kind of like when you meet a new friend. What, you, what do you do? You spend time with them, you get to know them. And that's what we have to do with our bodies is, is take that time to get to know who we are again. What are our feelings? Welcome to yourbrilliance.com. I'm your host, Amy Waterman. And today our topic is how to come back to your body. Now you have a body, I have a body. We all do, right? But what does it mean to live inside this particular body? Do you feel like your body accurately represents who you are? Is it a gift or a burden? Today, so many of us live inside our heads. You know, it's like we've checked out of our bodies. We spend all day staring at screens and thinking, and you know, who needs a body for that? Our bodies are only valuable for the good feelings they give us, like when we eat or shop or have sex. So how do we reconcile this dual existence as body and mind? And how can we feel as confident in our bodies as we do in our heads? Our guest for today lived that contradiction, and she's here to help us find our way through it so that we can recover our bodies and our sexuality. Susan Bremer O'Neill is an author, speaker, and coach who found self-love in the most unusual way. She got sober, then went from being a scientist to an exotic dancer. And in recovery from addiction, she founded Self-Appeal, based on the philosophy that all of our relationships start with the relationship we have with ourselves. She produced the woman-friendly DVD, Strip Tease for Real Women, and chronicled her life story in her memoir, From Sex Appeal to Self-Appeal. And for over 15 years, she's been helping women feel good about their bodies and themselves again. Welcome, Susan. Thank you, Amy. It's great to be here. So I have to ask you, you know, the title of your memoir is like the most perfect encapsulation of an idea I've ever heard, from sex appeal to self-appeal. So would you unpack that for us? Sure. Um, well, uh, basically, it's the life that I lived, uh, and, and I'm very fortunate enough to be able to try and bring my concepts of self-appeal to the rest of the world. Uh, but to go back, um, yeah, you know, I, uh, um, but, well, let's face it, sex sells. Sex is everywhere. And as a young woman, I saw this, I read the magazines, the Cosmo, the Vogue's that told me I should look a certain way, I should do a certain thing, I should be sexy, I should be desirable, all of this stuff. And then I also uh, was a traveling service technician. I used to fly all over the United States and Canada fixing and installing laser equipment. And at that time also, I saw that the women who were getting the attention, who were getting the help, I used to lug my gray toolbox all over, um, they were the beautiful women. They were the women who had the high heels on and who looked really special. They were appealing to the men. They had the sex appeal. And so I saw all of this as uh, this woman, this young woman, indoctrinated in the culture. I was watching Madonna, you know, all this really great stuff. And um, I then did get sober. I was a drug and alcohol addict. However, to look at me, you wouldn't have known it. Um, basically, all of my inner, it was inner turmoil. Anyway, it was when that happened in my mid-30s that I 
realized I hated my life. I was working in a male-dominated field, science, technology, and um, all these feelings and emotions that I'd stuffed down because I was so disconnected from my body, they started bubbling up. And, and it was not a conscious, well, yeah, it was conscious, but it wasn't something I had ever dreamed of doing, right? I'm gonna go become an exotic dancer. That wasn't it. It was just this very interesting life twist um, that I write about uh, and, and I explored this world of exotic dancing. And what I saw, Amy, was uh, the things that I had always yearned for um, and had seen these other women, you know, uh, dressing in evening gowns and playing, playing dress up in a way and being admired. And that's what pulled me into the strip club, very nice gentleman's club. And, and it was that experience then where um, I had to start to question what I was doing. I uh, have a scientific background. I have a great mind. And in my mid-30s, I was starting to uh, do things. I got myself into situations, as you can imagine, um, some of what I write about, uh, that weren't showing my self-respect. They, they weren't showing my body respect. Uh, and it was, it was an empowering experience in a, new, in a number of ways, but first and foremost, because I had the ability to question and I had a sober mind. And, um, and there, hence then the self-appeal. I started, eventually I started working with other women and I found that, well, you know, we all want to feel sexy and beautiful and be in our bodies, um, but, but most of us aren't taught the value and how to do that. So basically, it's moving away from external validation uh, to internal validation and how do we get all that. So hopefully wow. that I love, I love that story. And I know it must have been very difficult to live, but um, there's so many questions I want to ask you. Like, I'm going to have to ask you a superficial question straight up. How could you look that good at 35? Like, you know, that is one of those things, you know, you think to be that sexy at 20. Yeah, sure. But you were able to do that at 35. And I think, first of all, that's, and what I notice about myself when I have that reaction is see, I'm still looking at that external validation thinking, man, to have that good of a body at 35 must be something amazing. And you found it wasn't. Like, that's the amazing thing. You had that great body. You had all that male attention. You had everything that a lot of women want. The killer body, the male attention, and it wasn't enough. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and the... Um Okay, so, so uh, I'm currently moving self-appeal into working with women to bring them more fully into their body. I call it addiction to everything external. The, the really sad part is that, yeah, I had a nice body. I can look back now and I can say, wow, um, because it's a number of years removed from that. But I didn't know it. You're right. I, I didn't know it. Um, uh, I was always picking myself apart. I had the flaws. I... I, um, for, for many, many reasons, um, I had very low self-esteem, I had low confidence, and uh, it, was, it was through that, that acceptance that I started to really say, hey, wait a minute, why don't I have this for myself? So um, um, I, I also, while, <laughs> while um, using drugs and alcohol, to to disconnect myself to distance myself from my feelings it's a body of emotion right we have a physical body and then we have a body of emotion and it was those feelings that i couldn't bear and had cut myself off from but another addiction i had was to exercise so i exercised all the time um yeah super svelte um into my early 40s i worked as a dancer even but again, never appreciating it. And then, of course, beyond that, there was the food addiction. And I mean, just so many things to basically not feel from here down. Yeah. Uh, that, that was my scientific work. It was all up here. Yeah. <laughs> into here, you know. So what I'm thinking, this is like, this is the theme of, you know, 2017, you know, because there have been so many memoirs coming out about women struggling with exactly that. You know, um, Roxanne Gay's Hunger is, is really powerful. Glennon Doyle Melton's Love Warrior. They're about women who have gotten cut off from their bodies. And this is interesting because of, as you were saying, addictions, it could be, you know, it could be bulimia, it could be sexual trauma, it could be uh, drug and alcohol addiction. 
Is it true that it's something that happens to disconnect us? It's not necessarily the wear and tear of everyday life, but oftentimes there's some, there's some radical break that we break with our bodies because it's no longer safe. It's no longer safe to feel from the head down. Yeah, I, I really think so. It's been my experience in the women that I work with that, uh, yeah, something happens. It, it doesn't, um, I mean, obviously physical and emotional trauma, um, uh, horrendous abuse, I mean, that's, that's a given. Um, and then there are the more subtler ways that we disconnect. Um, and I think it happens early, early in childhood um, because our minds are not able to have um, the cognitive reasoning that we have as adults. And so something merely, um, for instance, my background is that my father was uh, in the army and he went off to Vietnam numerous times and he left us alone. So he was coming and going and, and there, of course, was the fear. Now, I don't know if I intuited that or if my mother voiced it. I probably just intuited it, um, uh, you know, of whether he would even come back. And then there's the, the, the child has magical thinking. Like, uh, if I'm a good girl, then he won't leave. So I, that, all of that is, is not trauma per se, but it does start to take us out of our reality. And, and then we become, um, yes, uh, addicted or looking for external validation, external approval. We become people pleasers. And of course, just by our very nature, we're taking care of others and we put ourselves last. And, and it just, it's this, um, this conundrum that will be uh, exacerbated uh, the older we get. Um, Things like, uh, oh, like, like bulimia addiction. I don't think that that is the, uh, the cause of it. I think that that is a symptom, and for me, escaping feelings and just so many, many reasons. But yeah, a, 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 a symptom of the disconnect. When you said that magical thinking, what I was thinking of is even as adult women, we have one magical thought that very few of us question, and that is, if we look perfect, he will love me. You know, how many women do you know are trying to affair-proof their marriages by trying to stay sexy for their husbands? There is this belief that if we fail to stay sexy, we will lose love and no one will want to be with us. And so in some ways that feeds that objectification because, you know, men unfortunately feed that belief that we are only valuable for how we look. And I'm sure that's what you would in the strip club. It wasn't you as a soul and a heart that they were after. It was you as a sexy body. So no wonder, no wonder we get in this mess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously they weren't coming in and looking, looking for my soul. Um, I think that, uh, uh, there, there's so much in what you just said. I think that um, men are fed the, uh, the false notion also that women need to look a certain way. I think it's a huge, huge problem. Uh, and I've seen it in clients and just girlfriends. Yes, the whole uh, idea of wanting to stay sexy. The whole philosophy behind self-appeal and what I had to really learn was that and, and actually what I did learn in the clubs um, and what I te used to teach my students, my striptease students, and I'll share that in a moment, but it is that uh, when I love myself, when I wholeheartedly uh, uh, validate who I am and I have respect for who I am, then the person, um, and, and for me, I was, a, I was single for a long time until I met my husband, so I was already on my self-appeal journey. But the person that I attracted loves me no matter what I look like, and he's, he's on his own journey. Now, the thing that I learned that I really want to share is that the men or women in our lives today, they're not concerned with how we look as much as we are. They actually want us to be confident. I'm sure you and your listeners have heard that confidence is the sexiest thing a woman can wear. Now, the, the unfortunate piece is that um, because we look and we judge from the outside, we don't have that confidence. But men, so many of them told me, because I used to talk to them a lot 
um, the, the places where I worked, we had a lot of conversation and, and, and after a while that became grueling and that's, you know, you can read about that if you like. Um, the men came in looking for a fantasy, not necessarily a real person. However, if the women or the men in their lives want to be that fantasy, can conjure that within themselves, then they don't need to go looking for it. And um, I, I was, I, I'll never forget this. I was uh, uh, dancing for somebody one night and he was telling me about his upcoming marriage. And I said to him, well, you know, why are you in here? And, and he says, oh, you know, I really love my fiance. And, and, you know, but I come in here and it's all about me. Somebody serves me a drink and I don't really have to put on airs or all of this. And, and I'm kind of dancing around. He goes, well, my fiance, she's far more beautiful than you are. And then he went, oh. and I said, no, 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 that's okay. And he said, well, you know, she doesn't look like you, but I love her. And that's the piece we women have to know. Um, the people in our lives are there for us already. They don't look at flaws unless we start to point them out. They don't care how we look if we're naked in bed with them. Um, they just are interested in our pleasure. And that's where we get caught up with a real um, wow. self-sabotage. Yeah. So... Let's say that, you know, we have a viewer who's really resonating, like I'm really resonating with this right now. How do we start making friends with our body? Because we demonize our bodies. So many women blame their bodies for everything that's bad in their lives. You know, especially sadly with, with the obesity crisis and uh, such hate being heaped upon women who aren't slender. And so, so many of us think, you know, if I was only skinnier, it's my body that's betraying me. It's my body that's letting me down. How do we start to shift that? I heard, uh, I heard something on um, NPR, uh, the, the program The Moth, the other night, and, I, and I'm, I don't remember the woman's name, and I apologize for that, but she was so funny, and she was a larger woman, and she said, I don't have a body. I am a body. So first of all, we have to remember that we are whole beings, and then specifically, it's kind of like when you meet a new friend. What, you, what do you do? You spend time with them. You get to know them. And that's what we have to do with our bodies is, is take that time to get to know who we are again. What are our feelings? And, and like I mentioned, um, you know, I was cut off from here. I didn't know what my feelings are. And, and so the physical body is all intertwined with the emotional body. And, uh, if, if your viewers so choose, um, they can connect with me. I actually have two very, very, very short meditations, one in the morning, one at night, that help you reimagine and get in touch with the, uh, the beauty, the strength, the, the miracle of who we are just in our bodies without, without what our bodies look like. We're, we're miracles. Yeah. That's wonderful. So I have to ask one more question. What do you think we can do now to start teaching our girls so that they don't make the same mistakes we have? I think, first of all, uh, we just have to teach them. We have to teach them about their bodies. Um, first and foremost, um, uh, in, in very young and then into adolescence, let's, let's emphasize sports, right? Let's emphasize what the body can do, the strength, the magnificent the magnificence, and take the focus off of what they look like. Then also, uh, and I know this may be difficult for some, we need to really talk to them about the, um, the reality of sex and love and what's going to happen with hormones and, and relationships. They're going to learn it out there anyway, right? So, um, Young men will more than likely want to have sex. Young women may want to have love. And, 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 and they're, they're both great, don't get me wrong, but they're not the same. And so I think education in that respect um, is a really great way to start. Oh, 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 and I want to say that similar to how I was watching Madonna 
and I did not get another view of sexuality, meaning um, it was somewhat lopsided, my view, uh, because I hadn't been taught how to value my body. So I had, I had everything that said, oh yes, do this and you will be valued. Um, and so the same thing today with uh, like Beyonce, you know, Beyonce is beautiful. She's a mature woman. She can do what she wants. She's empowered between you and I and everybody else. She's wearing stripper outfits in the world. And that's what the really young girls are seeing. So if they're not getting the message that, okay, yes, she's an adult and she can do that, but you don't need to do that to have respect, to get attention, to have love then they are going to just think, like I did, that that's the way you do it. And it's not. That is so fantastic. So for all of you out there watching, if you want to learn more about the self-appeal campaign, maybe get some information on what you could teach your daughter and find out about Susan's work, including her memoir, we've got a link for you. Just go to yourbrilliance.org slash self-appeal. That's yourbrilliance.org slash self-appeal. Susan, we're coming to an end, and I'm really sorry because I think I could talk to you about this all day. It's such an important message. But what is one last thing you would like to leave our viewers with? The dedication of my book is for all the lost girls and lonely women who are looking for love in all the wrong places and all the wrong ways. That's what I did. If you want love, if you want something better or different than what you have now, it has to start with you. So, yeah, check it out and learn to love yourself. Fantastic. And thank you out there for watching. We appreciate your viewership and we hope you come back and watch more soon. Until then, let your brilliance shine.